stay. I pushed her too far. I need to fix that right now. I'm Zach George. I train dogs. This is my new dog, and I'm gonna show you how I train her from day one. Things definitely won't always go smoothly. You can start from the beginning or you can pick up anywhere. Subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode. When you put into motion an approach based on love and respect, your results will forever remain in motion. This is Inertia. Welcome to the dog training experience. Today, I wanna to work with Inertia on her off-leash training. Priority one is to make sure that she is not hangry for this training session. Have you guys seen this? Nom Nom is changing everything. They actually mail you extremely healthy meals for your dog that are pre-portioned and completely ready to serve. The food arrives in a refrigerated box that's always super cold, and you can see all of the great whole food ingredients the second you open this food. The portioned out packets like this are my favorite part. I love not having to think when I feed my dog and still know that she's getting super healthy meals. Nom Nom's meals are made with USDA restaurant grade ingredients, and they're designed by actual veterinary nutritionists specifically for your dog. You know, people who know what they're doing. Try Nom Nom today by going to trynom.com slash Zach to get 50% off of a two week trial. I'll have a link below. We are enjoying sharing Inertia's journey with all of you. And as we move forward, we're having a stronger and stronger emphasis on off-leash training with her. Let's go over how to get a dog to behave and listen to you while off-leash in completely uncontrolled environments. Teaching most dogs to listen to you off-leash reliably in a variety of places takes a good couple of years of training. You'll remember that we've been, and still do, use the long lead extensively to aid us in our off-leash training endeavors. Ideally, we use a long lead like this at first to allow our dogs to know what it's like to be farther and farther away from us in some situations. The lead allows us to somewhat simulate off-leash training while also giving us control of the environment should things not go as we expect them to. So frequently when I'm training in places like parks or other places in public, I like to use a long lead like this. Once I feel that a dog is fairly reliable while on a long lead, and I've tested them over a few months in lots of places, I then graduate to training in fenced areas. And as counterintuitive as it seems, I still use the long lead even in a fenced area, but I'm using the lead in a different way. See, I really want to freely be able to drop the lead while testing our training. So in the event there is a breakdown in our communication, I'm able to more quickly get to a 50 foot lead in order to regain control. And I should remind you that you should seek out out new and unfamiliar but fenced environments very often throughout the first couple of years of training. Maybe a family member has a large fenced yard or you drive an extra 20 minutes or so to go to a different fenced sports field. Dogs don't always know whether a specific patch of real estate is fenced or not, so you can get a taste of how they might respond when in a new place and off leash. So let's say that you are at the point where your dog is listening to you extremely reliably with the lead on and in a fenced environment. That's when you can start testing without the lead and this process can go on for months in different places. And if at any point throughout this training, your dog starts to not listen to basic requests like come and stay, take a step back, put that lead back on them and polish up that training a bit. It's been completely normal for Inertia and I to have some good days and some not so good days when doing off leash training over the last one plus years. So where are we in our journey today? We're about to find out. We're gonna do some off-leash training today, and you might notice right off the bat, we're not in a big city. And you can see there's not a lot of dogs, there's not a lot of people around at all right now. So when you're training your dog to listen to you off-leash, you wanna change one variable at a time. In this case, the variable we're changing is, well, essentially removing the fence. So let's make sure we have some basic control of inertia. I'm gonna be using her Frisbee as currency today. Get it, go on, there we go, gotta get her in the mood to play good where possible i like to start my off-leash training sessions with a game of fetch i like to get her warmed up before a training session but frisbee and fetch in and of itself is off-leash training in fact for us it's been a really important part of off-leash training and she's intrigued by these people who were coming up over here she notices them come on inertia good girl good here get it Get it, that was a good decision. Come around. Good. 
looking at him again, but coming right back this time. Look how eagerly she's running back towards me. That's a huge part of off-leash training. You wanna make sure that your dog will come to you. And if you've gotten them obsessed with fetch, if you happen to have that kind of dog anyway, then you're getting them enthusiastic about running towards you. And I don't care if my dog has a toy or not. They're sprinting towards me, I'm happy. Heel, look at me, come on. Good. Lie down, stay. Lie down. Stand. Look at me. Heel. This way. Come on. Uh, easy. Look at me. Stay. Heel. Come on. Heel. Come on. Let's go. Here. Come on. Come on. Oh, this way. Switch. Come on, let's go. Lie down, stay. Stand, stay. Lie down. Stay. Okay, get it. Come on, let go, good, go. Good job, come. So in addition to basic obedience like that, you know, I like to do fun tricks too. Come on, weave, keep going. Good, lie down and roll over, come around, go. Stand, stay, yes. Heel, circles, keep going. Yes, come around. That was a different direction than normal too. Do you remember crawl? Keep going, keep going. Yes, come around, go. Good, stay. Stay. Okay, this might look super silly, but even practicing something like play dead, where you want your dog to hold that position and throwing in some extra distractions can really translate into other areas of training and teach them great impulse control. Okay, come around, good. Good. A hugely important part of your training with off-leash training is to make sure that your dog has a very reliable stay and come when called. So that's something we really are putting a strong emphasis on. Girl, come, heel. Stay. She didn't know I was gonna do that. We hadn't practiced that where I started going up the hill. So that threw her off. I need to fix that right now. So let me break that down. This is important. I pushed her too far. So I need to make it easier for her. Stay. Stay. I'm gonna pause here to reiterate, because I think that's all I need to do with her. Ah, uh ah, -uh. stay. Come. Good, lie down. Good. Come, this way. No, come. There we go. Good girl. <laughs> and she's like, hey, what about this? Let go. I think that's a good deal, girl. Nice. Let's see how inertia is doing with a basic off-leash free walk. Now, free walk is just where you let your dog roam and sniff and be a dog. But the only real rule is that she stays with me and doesn't reach the end of this leash. I'll periodically be making sure that she comes back. I'll change directions just to keep her paying attention. But this has its own set of challenges in that as you move, you're being consistently introduced to new ground scents and new variables. And one of Inertia's favorite things in life is to just sniff and smell and enjoy the world. She really finds great satisfaction in it. So we'll see how she's doing. And here, I mean, if she wants to stay near me, she can. If she wants to roam ahead, she can. And I still have her on the long lead, just again, to be extra responsible and make sure that if any surprises occur, I have options. I'm gonna call her back the other way just to make sure she's paying attention. Inertia, come. So I'll just start walking this way. That looks pretty good. 
We're just using the environment as a reward right now, letting her continue on her way and sniff the ground. Inertia, come. Wanted to keep up with me here. That's very good. Don't want to get too far away. The whole idea of a walk like this is to keep your dog engaged. But look, she's getting a little far away here. Almost getting to the end of the leash. Inertia, here. Come on. Good girl, lie down. Good girl, yes. Stay. And this whole time I haven't given her any food rewards or frisbee. I am using the environment here. And at this point, I expect her to listen to basic requests like this, even when I don't have treats, because we've been phasing them out. Doesn't mean I'll never use treats, but I don't have to. And here, I mean, she has given me enough confidence where I feel I can let her drag the lead. I don't have to necessarily hold it, but you'd want to make sure you were really confident that your dog was pretty reliable before you let go of the lead. Come. Good girl. Here, yes. I am gonna use a treat there. So if she's having a particularly tough time listening to me, then I'll break out a treat here and there, but it's just more and more rare these days that I have to do that. And that's kind of how it goes. Your dog doesn't just go from not trained to train. There's this whole bit of stuff in between that you have to work through. So between the occasional high value reward, like chicken or something like that, or a toss of the Frisbee, and allowing her to explore the environment, that's usually enough to gain compliance from her. Inertia, come. Come on, come on. Good girl. Yes. Here we go. I'll give her a good reward there too. I'll create some distance to make this easy for her. Inertia, come. Good girl. Come on, heel, lie down. Stay, very good. Yes, stay. So I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna put her into a down stay. And you can see we got a heck of a distraction here, a dog playing fetch. Here, yes, good girl. So I'm gonna let her look at me, now look at the dog. Here. Girl, here, yes. So there, really good job holding her stay while watching a dog running and playing. For her, that's been quite the challenge, so no reaction. Now the puppy is getting farther away. Come on, let's go. Good, lie down. Good, come around. Good, come. And I'll tell you what, let's see. I have a good feeling here. Let's take the lead off completely here for a sec. Come around. Ready, go. Good, come. Good. And so now, being able to play Frisbee with a dog <laughs> in the distance. So she was very focused through all of that. Now I'm back to off leash training on a slightly different patch of grass. Come here, come around. Go. So she's looking at the dog in the distance. I can see it from my vantage point. Come around but she's all into the game and paying attention to a person. That's kind of what dog training is all about, isn't it? How to train your dog to pay attention to a person. We have an individual over here walking up the hill. You can see she's focused. Let me verify that I can call her off the distraction. Come. Good girl. Yes, come on. Come around, ready? Good. Gave her a she likes those rollers. Come on. Ready, let go. Good. Come. And I mean, there's something to be said for that too. Sending your dog sprinting in the direction of something they're distracted by and having them come back to you in spite of that can be really powerful. It's another way that fetch is just a great way to reinforce coming back to you. It seems to me that people are very often in a huge hurry to take the leash off when they walk their dogs, but it's much better to take your time and prevent your dog from ever having the experience of running away from you. And if that's already happened to you, that's okay, but you need to put an immediate stop to it by making sure you control their surroundings. Tell me how your dog does off leash in the comments below. Go to trynom.com slash Zach to get 50% off of a two week trial of Nom Nom. Subscribe to my channel, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok and get both of my books. I'll have all of the links below. See you next time.